from the Walt Disney World Swan and Dolphin Resort in Orlando, Florida. It's the Q covering Splunk.com 2016. Brought to you by Splunk. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and John Walls. Hey, welcome back, everyone. This is The Cube, live in Orlando for .com. This is Splunk's seventh annual conference. It's bigger and bigger, of course, as does The Cube, Silicon Angle Media's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal and noise. I'm John Furrier, my host, John Walls, here in Orlando. We are more expansive, are we not, John? Yeah, yeah we're, we're getting bigger, we're always smiling. Growing every day. We're very data-driven. We share that data live, no on-demand, just straight live. You can't put a, a comments back in the bottle. Once they're out there, they're out there. All right, we're a couple of guests from Gigamon are with us right now, Phil Briston, who's the Director of Alliances and Business Development for Gigamon. Hi, Phil, thank you for joining us. And uh, Jay Bala Subramanian, who is the Director of Security Product Management at Gigamon. And Jay, welcome to you. JB, for short. Thank you. Until, right? <laughs> yeah. First off, um, uh, I, I know you're into visibility, right? That you're providing, in essence, peeling back that digital onion for companies and giving them insights into what's happening on the networks and the traffic. Tell us a little more elegantly, if you will, <laughs> uh, what Gigamon does, what your core business is, and what your relationship is with Splunk. You know, why are you here? Sure, thanks, John. So uh, that was a very good and eloquent description of what we do, but it, it is all about visibility. So we sit between the network and any tools that need to see traffic from a network. So whether they be security tools or application performance tools, whatever. We add an architectural layer to the network that make it very easy to take traffic from the network and deliver the relevant traffic to those tools. So rather than putting a tap straight into a network link and if you like taking a fire hose straight into a, uh, into a tool, which yes, gives you visibility into that portion of the network, but also gives you all the traffic that you don't need and makes it hard to see traffic from other parts of a network. We provide a way of having a, a total single tap into the network, so we, we work, every important link will provide taps into that part of the network, whether they're physical links or virtual links, if it's an NSX environment, or even now we're running beta trials in AWS in the public cloud. We can give you access to that traffic, take it into our platform, and feed it to the wide variety of tools that you have that are looking at network traffic. So say with Splunk, for example, and why we're here, we'll take packet data, filter that packet data to what is of essential interest to your security analysts and feed it into the Splunk app for stream so you can get it into your Splunk environment very easily. Also with Splunk, we'll take any traffic stream that we monitor and generate metadata from that. And the way we deliver that metadata is either as NetFlow records or as IP fix records. And again, feed it into enterprise security or into the, uh, the Splunk app for uh, for IP fix. This is a great point I want to highlight because what you're talking about is uh, what was used to be called data exhaust coming off your, your metadata, which is important to you, it needs to go someplace and turning that into gold is what we've always said about Splunk. You know, they take the exhaust, whether it's log files or whatever data, and they turn value into it, exhaust to gold, whatever you want to call it. But here's the issue. As you guys throw off network data, the impact is significant. I want you to take a minute to describe what the value is because everyone's looking at NSX, for instance, from VMware. Um, we was just at Oracle Open World last, last week. And the same thing's going on. People are looking at the network, putting all the, the data into the network to make the network more efficient. How does this help you guys? And, and what's the impact to the customers? Because, I mean, the goodness of the metadata is going to provide great visibility into things they might not have seen before. What, is, what are some of those things? Sure. Do you want to take that? Yeah, I, I could take that. Uh, so the whole idea of us, uh, the metadata project, is to increase the amount of signal and reduce the noise that you get from our network. So we think the network is a great source of user, application, and uh, all kinds of interesting security information. So some things which we do with our network metadata, let's take a look at all the certificates floating in the network. It's possible to take that. And then a tool can, uh, security tools such as Splunk can then look for all expired certificates or certificates that are self-signed or issued by questionable certificate authorities and you can do more further analysis. Other great examples of metadata are things like DNS. You know, a bot, any self-respecting bot, the first thing that it's going to do is try to resolve the DNS for its uh, bot master, let's say it wants to go and connect to www.evil.com, it's going to start a DNS request, and Gigamon being part of that network fabric, we act 
actually collect what is called uh, the original authoritative DNS request and response information. We take that out and feed it to the tools. Well, a lot of hacking's being done on the DNS side, big Absolutely. time. So that's a like low-hanging fruit, I can right. imagine. Yep. But other intelligence is being forced down the network. You're seeing that now in virtualization, and even whether it's non-virtualized or in the network fabric, this is where the action is. Yes. Because everyone's complaining the network's the problem. Uh -huh. Because all this compute is everywhere, all the storage is everywhere with Flash and all this going on. Where, what do you guys, what do you guys see that? I mean, what is customers, what are they seeing? What's the impact on them? So a lot of what customers are seeing is, is it, turn your, the network is the problem, but also the network is the source of truth, if you like. Whatever you find on, on end devices, it, it's there. Um, but you don't know where, how it's being used. But if you're looking at actually data in motion, so if you're looking at what's flowing across the network, you know what's really happening on your on your network. So, you know, Gigamon, it really is the moment of truth for sure. Right, and, and Gigamon is in a great position to to collect that information and feed it to our partners like Splunk. All right, so take us to a customer scenario because this is really, I think, really critically important to understand. A lot of hacking going on. So in the bowels of the plumbing network, if you will. Uh huh. There's a lot of issues. You have intranetworks on the inside the corporate network, you got across the internet, people are looking at direct connects now, yeah. all kinds of stuff. It used to be easy when you throw a circuit together between offices, you manage it end to end, but now it's more dynamic. What do customers do for with you guys? What can they, how do they roll this out? How do they get 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 the value? So this is where, right, we often bring in what is called the APT kill chain, which is, you know, there's the malware, it starts floating all around the network looking for you know, target hosts, et cetera, and finally exfiltrating it. A lot of security practitioners are saying that it's too late to catch malware in the final stages when data is actually yeah. being stolen. And that's what we call the north-south patterns. You want to be catching malware early on when it's actually noisy. When it's looking moving around. around. When it is moving they're around. they're going to the host. Once they get to the host, exactly. they're, they're done. It's hard to get out. But the problem is to do that, you actually need to go deep into the network and see east-west traffic patterns. You need to see traffic between your VMs. You need to see traffic between your access switches, et cetera. And that's where Gigamon well, comes Also, in. too, on the host thing, as they move from the host to penetrate further, they got to traverse some network. That's right. Mm -hmm. so, so all of a sudden, let's say there's peer-to-peer -peer connections happening between my endpoint and yours. Normally, it shouldn't happen in, if we both are working in an organization. But we as Gigamon can provide yeah. those kind of feeds and give it to security. So this is the moment of truth. I like that angle. So if you look at the network, it's like a car. You yeah. can sit in your driveway all day long, but then when you get on the road, you're moving. Yes. So that's where you guys take that approach. E exactly. And as soon as it moves, we, we can pick it up and package it and deliver it to a tool that's going to do the analysis. So this is where Splunk makes sense because what, what I hear you saying is, network visibility has always been out there in some form. It's just catching it fast enough seems to be the issue. Is that the? That is right. And we want to like take, the, evolve this project to go further. We want our grand vision would be when we can actually get into user and application information and you can actually provide that so you know which user is accessing which application so you can actually do things like you know forensics policy etc you know just from a pure security standpoint um, you know we have we have tools and then we have new apps and then we have evolving networks and so it's always just it's a perpetual cycle right right We're trying to stay ahead of the game yeah. so so how do you help people i guess where their status quo is you know the existing systems but they're going to grow and then you have new intrusions, new threats. I mean, how do you, Gigama, how do you philosophically approach that? So that's a that, that's a great question because actually what you were saying about you know seeing things quickly, yes, seeing things quickly is vitally important, but also as technology changes, being able to expand your visibility to cover that new technology is, is also vitally important. So you know, Gigamon spends a huge amount of effort making sure that whatever network technology is coming along, we're there and we have a way of tapping of tapping it. So you know, we have a development partnership with VMware to be able to see into NSX environments. We do um, similarly with Cisco in ACI environments. As I said, we're just going into, into public cloud because yes, you can see the traffic that's going into the public cloud and coming out, but how do you see that east-west traffic that you were talking about? Making sure that we have the ability to see that and to pull that out. And you know, tools don't develop at the same speed as network technology we can actually act, act as a buffer between that, whether it's network speeds changing and you know, us being able to 
take traffic and load balance it across multiple tools. So maybe if they can't process fast enough for the new 40 gig links you've put in, um, you can share the load across multiple devices. Um, but all the time we're, we're trying to keep up with both that technology and, and deliver the information faster and better to the tools that need to see it. So as Jay was I, mentioning, I just, drop out the noise and just put the important stuff over to the tools. I just like to add that we are this middle layer between a fast network and tools that need to keep doing more and more. Like, you know, there's a statistic we often quote in our company, 6.7 nanoseconds. That's the speed between two frames in a 100 gigabit ethernet. And you've got to do a whole lot in that time frame. Let's take a second to talk about the company Gigamon because you guys have an interesting culture. Uh, for the folks that are watching might not know, this is a culture of a company that was a, is a really big Silicon Valley success story. Right. Rejected by 35 plus venture capitalists in 2003, founders bootstrapped this company, for, foregone salaries for multiple years, um, and I know how it is, I've done that too. I know how the wife can be on your case, about, where's the cash? <laughs> but they stayed the course. During that time, you guys bucked the trends against Gartner. You guys were, were disruptive, outside the box thinkers, if you will. And there's other stuff going on, Y2K, post Y2K, bubble bursting, all that stuff. Now you're successful. Okay, so hats off to you guys. Congratulations to you, your company and the founders out there. This is a, this is a great example of a successful, large bootstrap Silicon Valley. This is the way it is, not like on HBO. But my question is this. <laughs> One of the things that was made you different, in a sense rejected by all the VCs in the early days, was that you, you were counterculture to the Gartner current model of thinking. You weren't in a category at the time. So, question. What is that new disruptive mentality that you guys have now. What are you guys doing that's disruptive that no one's seeing? Because uh, we're talking about the moment of truth. That's data driven. What is uh, the one thing that's still in that culture today that's I disruptive? Think, I, I think from a product perspective, and maybe uh, Phil can talk from a cultural perspective, but from a product perspective, we want to evolve what we call as a security delivery platform and make it a reference architecture for all tools. So all of a sudden tools can take intelligent decisions and can program the Gigamon to say, I'm seeing something interesting happening here. I want to start a packet capture or I want to start metadata. So Gigamon sort of serves as a central platform and all these tools use APIs to programmatically narrow down the thread and then analyze it further. I think that would be our grand vision. <laughs> and there's no magic quadrant for that, is there? That's right. I mean, that's really the success. I look at the world right now, and I go all at hundreds of events this year, and here's what I look for. When a company doesn't have a magic quadrant, I'm interested. Because Gardner breaks the magic quadrants down and by its silo. The most successful companies actually cut across multiple quadrants. Yeah. So it might not be a leader in any one quadrant. That's right. Because you're basically talking about is a completely different view of how they silo out those quadrants. That's you know, a great point. That is a, that is a great point. I think if you look corporately, I, I, I can't speak for Ghana, but I mean, maybe they'll change their mind and, and give us a magic quadrant for visibility because uh, certainly if you look at how the company's performing and the, and the market interest in the company, you know, we're obviously hitting, hitting mainstream. And we're, we're growing yeah. fantastically and the stock price is reflecting it. And that's because your know, customers keep coming back, expanding the visibility layer that they have because they see such huge value in it. And the DNA is still the technology Absolutely. in the founding DNA. Uh, I mean, it's still CEO there. reminds us constantly that we need to be a disruptive company. Even though we're market leader in the space, you cannot sit back and think. All right, every company's got that one thing. Intel's got the Moore's Law. It's a cadence, it's a cultural feature. What is your company's one thing that you could point to and say, it's in our DNA, the one thing that it could be we can talk about the Gigamon 5, actually we identify the five aspects of our culture. One is people, one is innovation, and one is risk taking. So we always focus on pushing the envelope, looking for innovative solutions, and interestingly, we have a philosophy which says employees first. Very often a lot of companies say shareholders first, but yeah. we believe that if we put our employees yeah, first, by the founders. it automatically right, yeah. results in the best shareholder returns too. Congratulations, guys. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, sharing the story and the updates on the security and great stuff. And again, congratulations on the great success yeah, story. Real quick, I've noticed Jay say a couple of times, signal and noise. Yeah. I think we ought to work on that. That sounds like a pretty cool little slogan. We live in a networked economy now. Everything is either signal or noise. Our job is to bring in the signal. Gigamon 
bringing the sinful into his things. The moment of truth is here on the cube. So it's on, and it's on the network with Gigamon. Great, great segment. Thanks, guys, for sharing. We're back to have more live coverage from Orlando at .com. This is the cube. I'm John with John Walsh.